Hey, this is Josh again. Today I am recording live for the first time in a very long time. I haven't even been on video in a long time, so I might be a little bit awkward. But today I'm giving myself about two hours to make a car in my game work correctly. So let's do it. I've got this nice new microphone, so hopefully the audio quality should be pretty good. Uh, my old microphone actually broke. So let's see how this goes. So I'm going to switch to my face in one of the corners. <clears throat> so this is what it currently looks like. And this is what I'm going to have to make work in the next two hours. <laughs> Let's see how I go. And try and talk to myself as much as possible. So you can pick up this key. Every now and then he presses the unlock button. So when he presses the unlock button for this car, he, well, currently just launches inside the car. Uh, and then I've copied pasted the code to control a boat and so the car doesn't really handle like it like you would expect a car to handle it's like pressing sideways makes the car go forwards I don't know <laughs> it's pretty funny though all right so now to make this kind of look like the original GTA or something like that. All right, let's have a look at the code. All right, so I'm opening up my car hijacker script, which defines all of the logic for when the car... Uh, I've got this thing called player hijacker, which basically... All right. It basically defines uh, overrides for a player. So I can completely change the behavior of the player in a player hijacker. So if you have a look at this hijacker here, this box around the car, whenever the player is within that region and the hijacker is active, then it will apply whatever or overrides this function here wants to apply. So for example, I can change the movement speed to zero and I can, um, I don't know what else I can do. I, I can turn, I can turn on no clip. So basically the player is allowed to go inside of the car's collider while, while driving the car. So basically I complete, I completely redefine the controls on the player. So what if I zoom this in? That'll probably make more sense. Okay, so basically each frame, it will just call apply overrides, and then I can do whatever I want to the player. So for example, I have this thing called cannonball onto controller. <laughs> Very specific functionality, but Basically, I couldn't be bothered animating the player getting into anything, like getting into a boat, getting into a car, sitting on a couch, any of that kind of stuff. So instead, I make the player go into a cannonball position where he grabs onto his knees, and then he just sort of flies over to the destination and then and then like sit and then goes into the sitting pose, for example. So I don't need to manually animate any of that stuff, and it's sort of... If I'm consistent about it, then it, it becomes just the way the game works without me having to put a ton of effort in. So, yeah, yeah, I've got this live chat feed over on my right, so I should be able to see messages as they come in if anyone bothers to comment, but that's okay. So I have... Yeah. So basically when, when the player's input is set to moving, so it's basically whenever you're pressing an arrow key or you're moving the joystick on a controller, uh, this moving value is a boolean and it will be true. 
uh, if, the jo if the joystick is in the middle, moving will be false. So when, when the cannonball onto controller, that's, that basically, it's basically encapsulates all the functionality of cannonballing onto something. And so when it's finished cannonballing, it sets this boolean to true. And then I am able to uh, sample the player's movement vector and then use that to control the car's destination speed and destination steering direction, etc. Uh, and then what I do is I, I set the movement speed of the player to zero and I disable interaction. So while you're inside the car, you can't like grab onto a box and push it around, for example. Anyway, so, and then each frame while the car is running, while the car is active, I use the destination speed and the steering direction, the destination steering direction, and I adjust the speed and steering direction and add a force to the car. So currently that doesn't work very well, but you can see that I am updating the visualization of the front wheels. So I have these two pictures of wheels. If I turn the lights on. So I have this wheel here, which is just a picture that I rotate when the car steers. And then there's one on either side. There's one here too. And so I want that, that to have a rotation that is relative to the steering direction. <clears throat> So I think what I'm going to do is I kind of, I want to use the add force function. Ah, oh, get a miles. <laughs> Can't watch now, but looks great. Thank you, miles. All right. So let's see. Yeah. So basically I want to use the add force function on this, on the car's rigid body. So the what one way to do it would be to inc would be to change the velocity of the car's rigid body directly. So I could try that. I could try that. Uh, but another way is to more physically accurate is to actually use the add force function, which uh, like it will it will use an acceleration value to change the velocity, which then changes the position. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really awkward talking to yourself, isn't it? So, add force at position. So there's there's force which can do linear movement, and then there is torque which can do rotational movement. And so, add force at position can actually do both. So, I kind of want to demonstrate some of this stuff. Let's see if I manage to make this two hours long, this video. So I'm going to plug in my tablet so that I can actually draw pictures. And then I think I have to, um, I have to run a magical program. Just give me a second. All right, so now my tablet should actually work because I've had to run this crazy program as root on Linux. Great, fantastic. Um, so I'm gonna open up Critter. And then I will draw a picture of this behavior All right, new file, A4, create. Okay. So 
So if I just get a small pen probably, a pencil, there you go. So basically if I have an object and its center of gravity is in the middle, so this is the center of gravity, normally if you add a force it will be relative to the center of gravity. So if you say add force in this direction, it will it will apply to this position. So like this is the direction and and this is the position right here that matters. So add force at position is different because well this force right here will never cause the car let's say this block here is the car it will never cause the car to actually rotate. But if you say add force at position and ask the position to be here then it will actually cause a bit of rotation around this point. So it will actually start to rotate around the center of gravity at the, maybe at the same time as adding a little bit of linear force. Anyway, that's just some physics stuff. So I have to consider that when I'm making this car work. I'm just gonna start by setting the velocity directly because maybe that's okay. But usually, it, like if you manually change stuff in a non-physical way, you can really break things. But I'm just going to see what happens. So this might take a little bit of time to figure out because I'm not really that smart. So I have this back wheel center up. Vector. So back wheel center. I'm going to add an arrow to tell me what direction that is. Oh, right. See, that's a problem already. That's probably why it didn't work before. <laughs> because uh, the up direction of my back wheel center is going to be to that direction there, which is not very good. <laughs> All right. So let's make it actually point forwards relative to the car. I kind of want to try it again how I had it before and just see if that changed the behavior. So instead of having to carry the key over to the car and activate it every single time, I'm just going to set the hijacker to active and then move the player to the car. So as soon as I press play, it should actually get in the car. There you go. So if I press forwards, the car rotates as you might expect. <laughs> Sorry. <sighs> okay. I think I might just be a bit more quiet than I initially intended. But, um, because having people maybe looking helps me to concentrate. Oh my goodness, I'm getting messages talking about concentration and then suddenly there's my phone is buzzing and let's see how it goes. I'll just turn my phone off. So, it helps me to concentrate if I know that people are watching and expecting something. So let's see. So I add an up vector at the position of the, the back wheel center. So that's going to be where that arrow was. So at that position. But I think, I think the arrow may, I think the arrow generally points to the side, like in maths. So when you, yeah, yeah. So if I reset this rotation, yeah, it points 
to zero degrees in the mathematical sense, which is to the right. And then when you add to the angle, it rotates anti-clockwise, which is completely counterintuitive because you're used to looking at clock faces, which start at the top and rot rotate clockwise. So anyway, it always, it takes a lot of, <laughs> it takes a lot of practice to get used to the fact that it starts here and goes there. Anyway, when you add angle to it. So since it points to the side, that means that up is actually going to be that direction, which is not correct. Wow, did I just... Okay. So I'm actually going to say right instead of up because, well, that's technically the correct direction for zero degrees. But adding a vector to that position is going to cause problems. I can, I can just tell already. Maybe I should try and simplify it. Like instead of, instead of being correct, I'll just say add force. I'll just add the force to the middle and see how the game feels and change it if I don't like it. Cause it's kind of weird. The back wheels can't move side to side, but they can f move forwards and backwards. Whereas the front wheels can are the same, except they can actually rotate, which means that there's actually two sort of fixed, fixed rails on the car, which makes it really confusing. I might have to, I might have to look up some kind of tutorial or something on how other people achieve this. But you can see that that's what it looks like now that I've set it to go right, basically. <laughs> okay. Because it's pushing at the back of the car, the car's always going to topple over. It's kind of like balancing a broom on your hand. So, because the center of gravity is much higher than the, than the fulcrum, I guess, than the rotation point. So maybe what I should do is actually put, is actually control it via the front wheel center. So what I'll do is I'll move, I'll move this between the front wheels. I'll, I'll, I'll even put the wheels inside of it so I don't get it confused front front wheel center is going to be right between the the wheels so i'm going to change i'm going to move the wheels so that they're perfectly in line with the front wheel center that seems like it's a little bit too far forwards Okay, that'll do. And then I'm going to use my front wheel center in my script. So I'm going to have to add a, another field front wheel center. I'm definitely getting a lot more people actually viewing the video on YouTube rather than Twitch. Twitch is kind of apparently not very good for having people join your stream unless you uh, bring them in from somewhere else. Anyway, so I'm going to add the force to the car between the front wheels and see what happens. So play the game. <laughs> Look at that. Look, the wheels are pointing sideways. Yeah, that's just great. Is it because my arrow is rotated? Right. Okay. It's because the front wheel center is actually rotated by 90 degrees. That's hilarious. Okay. <laughs> 
I think, yeah, I always get my angles mixed up because I think the car itself actually points like up and down rather than left and right, which means that its angle is offset by 90 degrees, which means that I end up having code that just adds or subtracts 90 degrees randomly. It's frustrating, but it's much harder to rearrange it in the editor than to just add 90 degrees. So that's exactly what I'm going to do right now. I'm just going to add 90 degrees and it will fix my wheels. We'll fix my wheels. Oh, you see that? My camera trigger code is now broken. Okay, now the trigger will actually, now the camera trigger will be enabled when, when the hijacker is active. Okay, so at least by controlling it from the front, There is so little friction. At least by controlling it from the front, it doesn't like spin around. But yeah, you can tell that like I intended for this to be used for a boat, <laughs> which is why it's so strange. That's funny. I should turn off the shadow of the player's head somehow when when the player gets in the car because it's causing this weird artifact. It doesn't really make any sense, does it? But I'll okay, what I'll do is I'll write that on my to-do list so that I don't forget. Turn Turn off player head shadow when in car. So I really need to think through this. How do cars even move? I guess they... Like with my boat, I would make the motor spin and then the boat would slowly speed up. Which is, a, which is definitely not what I want. I want it to speed up like really fast. And so I definitely don't want it to take very long to change speed. So yeah, I know lerping here is not really necessarily the best thing, but I think it doesn't really matter because I'm doing it in fixed update, which will always have exactly the same time step. So, death speed. So basically, in here, what I should do is draw some debug arrows. I think that would probably get me, probably make it a little bit easier. So, I have this thing called draw, so I can make a new draw tool that goes from local to world. And so I can just draw local arrows. So draw dot arrow at the position of, so I'll just draw it from the middle of the car and I will draw it in the direction of the local move force. 
and it needs to have a color, so it's going to be color dot red. And so if I turn on gizmos in the game view, then I should actually see There you go, you see that red arrow? Perfect. Yeah, okay, that... <laughs> Obviously there's many problems. But you can see that the arrow is always perfectly lined up to the camera, which is sort of the point. So when the camera is perfectly vertical, you can see that it steers the car as intended. But I think I don't really want it to be aligned to the camera, honestly. I want it to steer when you press left and right. And just drive when you press forward and back. Because anything else would be really confusing. It works with the boat, because the boat is so dynamic. But with the car, I don't think I want the controls to do anything other than what, you, what you're expecting them to do. <coughs> So I'm just gonna So I'm just gonna bind them directly. So the steer direction is gonna be the local move force dot x. Right, so it was also inverse transforming the camera vector. So I'm just going to straight up use move force vec as the local move force and see what happens. And you should see the red arrow be always relative to the car itself rather than the camera. So you can see when I press up, it always points forwards in the direction of the car. Obviously, the car needs a little bit of friction. <laughs> See that? When I steer, for some reason the car actually moves, which is really weird to me. It doesn't seem right. Ah, uh, you see that? Player input move speed. So this is a little bit weird because my player works in all four directions. You press left, he goes left, you press right, he goes right, and so forth. Uh, and so I'm trying to use those controls. So currently move, moving means that you're just pressing any direction on the, on the arrow keys on the keyboard. Uh, and move speed talks about the magnitude, so move speed by default is going to be 1 when you're pressing a key and 0 when you're not. So move speed is a little bit like, it's not even related, <laughs> it's not related at all to the actual move force. So I'm using this sign thing and then multiplying it by move speed, which I think is actually incorrect. That's clearly something I used, I added for the boat controller, but I think what I really want is just to use the Y value directly. And so I've got this destination steer direction. And I think I want to steer like reasonably slowly. So let's see how that goes. Whoa. Hey, Ben. <laughs> Getting all these random people. All right. Wow. Okay. Okay. So now I can actually steer without the car driving forwards and backs, forwards and backwards. 
So what I find really strange is that the wheels like instantaneously turn when I press an arrow instantly. Ah, uh, so you see, I'm actually using, yeah, I was completely doing it wrong. It was jumping to like a really huge number and then it was capping it at one. Anyway, that's a little bit confusing. I'm just gonna try it out. <laughs> when was that comment made? See, I don't even know how to tell. Oh, there you go. My wheels steer slowly. And I can drive forwards and back. Oh, you can see the player's feet are moving. That's what that green and red arrow are. Clearly, that's not what I want. <laughs> so the player is actually walking around. It's like a, it's like the wiggles, I guess. So I'm going to actually fix that right now. State sitting mode. Whoops, that didn't work. Where is sitting mode defined? Character pose sitting mode. And I will have him in the legs out position, I think. I think upright would be technically the right one, but I don't actually have, I haven't actually implemented that. So I think legs out is one that I have implemented. Maybe, no, I have implemented lazy. Okay, so I'm gonna set him to lazy. It's basically he lies down on his back and then he can move his arms. It, oh, okay, well, <laughs> obviously there's problems that need to be solved. He's lying down in his car now. <laughs> I'm going to have to um, split up the floor and the dash images into two separate pictures so that it can work correctly. So you can see I can drive forwards and backwards, but I can't steer the car. Can't steer. Can definitely go pretty fast though. I think it really needs some. Uh, it really needs some friction. So, like, if I turn the drag levels up to like ten on both linear and rotation, what do you think? Wow, having that rigid body thing open is lagging the game like crazy. Wow, okay, it definitely slowed down the car. So if I let go of the acceleration, acceleration. So I would probably expect it to sort of hit the brakes at that point. So maybe what I really want is just to change the velocity of the car like I was going to before. So the velocity I think is in world space. So if I just add if I just set it can I set it? If I just set it to the forwards direction and I use the current speed as the actual velocity multiplier, then it will instantly change speed. So let's see how that goes.
So every time I make a new variable that I'm supposed to assign, I pretty much always forget to actually assign it to something. So let's try that again. And I've used up a ton of my two hours that I said I was going to take. Let's see how I go. Wow, okay. So forwards and backwards are actually doing the opposite of what I want. Let's just debug log the speed value. I did in fact write down a few links here about car physics yesterday. So I think I might just go to one of them and see what they suggest. Oh man. How to live stream. What? Oh, it disconnected. Okay, OBS just disconnected for a little bit. I don't know why, but I don't really want to know. Oh, this seems really complicated. <laughs> It seems like a lot more complicated than what I want. Oh man, it's actually very detailed. It's like how to make a real simulation of a car. Seems really complicated. Maybe I could actually do it with a bunch of joints. Is that something you can do? So maybe, maybe you could utilize the physics engine itself yeah yeah that seems really complicated it's a lot more complicated than I was hoping for a lot more complicated than I was hoping for. <laughs> Alright. So I think I'll go back into Critter. When I have a wheel like that, it can go in these two directions but it can also rotate around like that. But it certainly cannot move like that and that unless there's like a ton of force allowing it to do that. Like if you're going really fast, then you do a burnout. But if you've got the front wheels pointing at like a 45 degree angle, they want to move the same way, but rotated. So there's one direction that way, there's another way that way, that way, that way, and they can rot... I, I guess they... I guess in the front wheels you wouldn't generally rotate them at all. So the back wheels... the back wheels tend to turn with... when, when the front wheels turn, but the front wheels generally just say exactly where they want to go. So I think if I pick the halfway point between the front wheels and then say when it's steering in this direction I want because if if 
if it goes that way, then it's the same as this one going that way. So if I just pick the center and just forget the fact that there's two wheels, just forget about the two wheels. Really, the car just drives with one wheel in the middle and then balances somehow. So I've got this one that wants to go that way or that way. And then same with the back wheel. It wants to go that way or that way. So if I step this simulation and try to move the car forwards, like if I actually try to drive the back wheels, then I will be going, zoom in a little bit, I will be going this way. So when I try to step that, I want this point to be, let's say I step it by like a lot. So this point after point, after like a short step might be up here. And then this point might be up here. So I pretty much just need to re-anchor the car from here to here instead of from here to here. So that's going to be like, But that means that the car will now be rotated because the car will be around this line instead. So you can sort of think of the car as like a motorbike instead. So it goes from this orientation, then after a short time, Then after a short time, it will be in this orientation. Because the, the back wheel does in fact rotate a little bit because it always points towards the front wheel. So the actual orientation of the back wheel doesn't matter at all. It's basically just a point in space that always on the next frame should move towards where the front wheel was, right? So this point here is somewhere between here and here. It's collinear with those two points, except I didn't actually draw it on the line. It's collinear with that point and that point on the next frame. And then this point up here is just, is actually on the axis through the front wheel. So that point should be, whatever, it's not a very good drawing. So maybe what I can do is just implement the simulation manually. It doesn't seem very good though. <laughs> so it was here and I want it to be there. How do I get the physics? The, the real question is like that, that's really easy to simulate. That's really easy to simulate. But then getting this, getting the physics engine in Unity to play this game might be a little bit tricky. Maybe what I need is to just test, test making like a little motorbike just straight up using Unity physics. Is that a thing I can actually do though? Like, can you make a thing in Unity's physics engine where a rigid body can only move along its, its can only move along one direction? 
or, or it has like a ton of friction on one axis and no friction on another axis. <sighs> okay. Unity friction on one axis. UD. Different drag for each axis. That sounds like what I want. So if you just literally apply drag manually each frame, then you can um, that's really crazy. They're, they're calling get component twice every frame for this update function. <sighs> Awful. Um, see, all of these are technically incorrect implementations of drag. I think, but um, I actually have, I have a bit of code that implements drag So I'm going to have a look at that. So my rigid body proxy, my fake rigid body, it goes. Drag. So this is how you actually implement drag. You have to go velocity times equals one minus delta time, oh well there's brackets around that, right? One minus delta time times drag. And then you use that to multiply the velocity. That is the correct way to implement drag. <sighs> so is that even gonna be useful at all? That's the real question. Let me just implement some kind of motorbike controller. It might be a bit easier. Maybe I should even make a new Unity project just so I can just so I can play with it, you know? So if I just make a new one. 2D I'll just call it car physics. And then, wow, it's all this random stuff that it just gave me. So I'll make a new project called car physics. This is where I shall implement the physics for my car. You like my tree? I used sapling gen in Blender to make that tree. All of my assets are generally made in Blender. It makes it a lot easier to make, you know, really nice smooth details. And if you use the right materials, you can look, make it look pretty flat. Maybe like a vector drawing, but with a lot less effort <laughs> than a vector drawing. The reason these buttons are black is so that you can actually see the player's arm 
when it hovers over the top because he's got a white skin on his arm. And then when it reaches out and the buttons are saturated, you can't even tell that his arm is sticking out and it's really confusing. You can't really tell what's going on. Unity is taking a lot longer than I would like to create this new project. But I'm just going to sit here and wait. There we go. Okay. Now, to make a car controller that uses the actual physics engine. So if I have... car um, front wheel and then I use a rigid body for my front wheel I'm really feeling like there's got to be a better way Anyway, whatever. Let's see. Box Collider 2D. So I've got my Box Collider. Frot. Frot wheel. Got my front wheel. Ah, oh, my shortcuts don't work anymore. It's like a normal Unity. Oh man. I'll call that the back wheel. You never know if people are going to come along and comment. Got my two wheels. If my front wheel is rotated like that. I want to join them together somehow. So if I say joint 2D What's a friction joint? Not sure. If I stick a distance joint between this and the back wheel, then let's um drag in the tire image. That will probably make it a lot easier to work with. So I'm looking for car physics and I'm looking for assets. Just dump the picture in there. Add it to my front wheel or something. Can you can you just drag it straight in? There you go. Why didn't that work the first time? So for some reason it always adds it at the origin of the world or something? I don't understand Unity at all. So you can see there's a joint between those two. Wow, none of my shortcuts work anymore. I've added a lot of custom shortcuts to Unity, which just simply do not work in a new project. So I'm going to have to add a car controller of some kind. Car controller. And I totally forget how you even like get key presses in Unity. How do you do that? I think you just say like input dot something. So I think in the update function, you have to go input dot, no, you 
Unity key press. Uh, jo Joyce Dick. There we go. Input dot get axis. For some reason, the auto completion doesn't work yet. Maybe vertical. Um, and then I will apply that to a rigid body. Right wheel. Add force. Now I'll add the force in the up direction, I think. So I want to go front wheel dot up. Is that a thing you can do? Transform dot up. And I will multiply that by speed. Look, I'm going to do it the correct way, which is to do that. Then do that, then do that. So the physics has to be handled in a completely different function to the input, because both run at different rates. Okay, let's see what I got. Unfortunately, gravity is something that is currently turned on. <laughs> so let's turn that completely off. There's a default material. Well, that's good to know. I might actually use that in my real game. So the default material to be frictionless. Because why would I want it to be anything else? <laughs> okay, so obviously it doesn't work because I haven't assigned front wheel to anything. Look at that, it almost worked. <laughs> so if I... I don't really know what I'm doing, just for the record. Because you'd think the force would be applied from the back wheel, not the front wheel. That doesn't really make any sense. So the back wheel... The back wheel should point towards the front wheel, no matter where it is. And so the force should be basically the difference between the front wheel and the back wheel, right? So front back wheel dot transform dot position minus the front wheel. No, I probably want it to go the other way around so that the vector points from the back to the front. So I've got my front wheel minus my back wheel and then I normalize it so that I have a unit vector and then I multiply that by the speed and so that means the force will always be added in the direction of the front wheel. Uh, back wheel. 
is where I want to add the force. And then, as usual, almost forgot to assign the actual field that I made. Okay, at least that works. But my experiment was to add some form of friction horizontally on both wheels. So what if I just do that? So this is how you apply friction. This is how you apply drag. So if I just go back wheel dot velocity dot x times equals, can you do that? Okay. Apply wheel wheel friction. Okay, and then I want to go the drag is going to be like 10 and there's going to be no drag in the X direction of the wheel. So that's going to be, I'm going to have to remap that velocity to the local coordinates of the wheel. So that velocity is in world space. Ugh, forget it. I was trying to go for auto. I was trying to go to the definition, but it doesn't work for some reason. I've been writing a lot of Rust lately, so I write let instead of var half the time. So if I transform If I inverse transform the velocity into the space of the wheel, then I modify. Oh, I need my delta time. Time dot delta time. Is, is that the right variable? Okay. And then I've got my drag. And then I want to reassign that to the back wheels velocity. So I need to transform the local velocity back into the, the world space. I shouldn't be using back wheel here. I should be using wheel and then I need to reassign it to the wheels velocity value. doesn't need to return anything anymore. And so now if I apply that to the back wheel and the front wheel, will it work? <laughs> That's the question. Maybe I can use the, uh, maybe I can make it steerable as well, basically. So get the left and right speed on the keyboard and then use that to use that to rotate the front wheel. So I want to go front wheel dot rotation plus equals gear speed. This seems like a really bad approach because it's sort of, it's still non-physical.
Maybe what I should do... Yeah, maybe... I'll tell you in a second. I just want to try this out. It's worth seeing. Wow, it actually does work. Or something, maybe. see it's applying a ton of friction sideways to that front wheel. Wow, that's really funny. And then I need to always point the back wheel towards the front wheel, right? So the back wheel needs to have rotation equals this vector's angle, basically. So the rotation is going to be Back to front vec. So how do I get the angle of that? Is there a unity function that does that or do I have to copy paste my tool function from here? There's going to be a function that goes angle of vector or something. Angle of. There you go. I'll just copy paste them in. I'm, not, I'm surprised these functions don't come with Unity. Kind of obvious. Whatever. So. I set the rotation to the angle of that vector and so that will make the back wheel always point towards the front wheel. Or will it? See, I don't know. I just don't know. Well, anyway, here's another plan. What if I basically just calculate where the car would be after one frame? Because I already figured out how to do that in this diagram earlier. And so if I just calculate that and then I just figure out where the car itself should move from and to including the angle right and so I need that angle and I need this offset from there to there so once I have that I can actually use that to add a force to the car which I think kind of makes sense. The real question is how far will this point move from there to there in when this point moves from there to there because basically it will be the distance along this line that allows this distance to stay the same. So I'm not really sure. 
I guess it's just a triangle, right? It's just basic triangle stuff. So if I draw it, I have this is like if I draw like a right angle triangle or something. I'll just draw out the problem. So I've got I've got this line here and I have a point on that line such that it is a certain distance from this point. So there are going to be two of those points, right? Because there's going to be another point up here that is also the same distance. So that point there and that point there will be the same distance. And so I need this to be D. And I know if I ask for the, perpen the closest perpendicular point, I already have a function that does that. If I ask for the closest perpendicular point on this line, I will be able to get that distance there. So that's A for away from the line. So that's A. So I know A. And then I also need to know, well, what I really need to know is how far, this is the real result over here. So this is like H or something, this distance from there to there. So H is the real result. Sorry, I do in fact know D as well. I do know D because that's just a constant, the distance between the front wheel and the back wheel. A is the distance from the line, which I can calculate really easily. And so that means H is Sokotoa, right? So that's going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. So H adjacent over hypotenuse. So like ka, right? So cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. So it means that cos of h equals a over d. Which also means that h equals a cos of a over d. All right, so I have that calculation there. So I can always figure out where this point here should be. So all I really need to do uh, but the problem is that from one frame to the next, the back wheel actually determines how far it should move. So yeah, I'm not really sure. Not really sure. Because that distance should basically be relative to the speed. And so that means I'm pushing this one across that line instead. Which means I have to try this again. Let's try doing the maths again. So say I have got this point and that point. Let's call that S. So that's the, that point to that point. And so I know what S is. Got this dotted line up there. And then I need to, I have my front wheel, so that's the old front wheel position. And so I need to figure out along the front wheel's axis, which is like that. Along the front wheel's axis, 
how far does it need to go to stay the same distance? So I called that H, right? So this distance from there to there is H. So let me just make another distance here. This will be the F distance and I definitely, whoops, I definitely know what the F distance is because that's just the constant distance between the back wheel and the front wheel of the car. And so that means when I move by S, which I also know because I'm the one who moved it by S, I know what H is because H literally just equals F minus S. And then I need to move this point along here, along this dotted line, such that the new point, such that this line right here is also A, no, is also F. That should also be F, which I also know. And so I know F, I know S, I know H, I just need to know, I just need to know this one. So that's going to be, that's going to be D, which I don't know. Uh, I've renamed the variables, unfortunately, but I do not know D. I need to figure out what D is because that's how far it moves across. So the trick is always basically just find the right angle triangle. Where is the right angle triangle? Ah, yes. So what if I map this point onto this line? Because you can always do a parallel mapping. So if I draw a line up to this one, such that there's a right angle along that line. That means I know this position here. Is that position relevant? Because if it is, then it makes a right angle triangle. And I would also know this distance because I calculate from the distance. <laughs> I just don't know how far D is. Hey, Jerushi. Hey, Jerushi. I wonder if I can have it like make noises. make noises when people send me a message. I have no idea. Whatever. Okay. So I need to figure out how long D is. And I haven't done maths in ages, so it's kind of it's always hard to re-remember how this stuff works. Hey, hey.
Hey Jerushi, do you know how to solve this problem? I really don't know how to find D. If I tweet about it. How do you, um, how do you share the stream with, with someone? That's what I need to know. Ah, oh, there's a button at the top. Share. Copy the link. Jerushi. Thanks, Jerushi. Much appreciated. I'll even follow you. Thanks, mate. Heart. <laughs> no problem. Thank you so much for sharing my stream. For baby steps, you know? <laughs> All right, concentrate. I know H, and I know F, but I just don't know D. I know S, and I know F over here. I know that... Wait, if you know the length of two sides of a triangle, do you know the other one? Is that a rule? Is that a rule? Length of remaining triangle side. No, just any triangle. Like what? What? Uh, maybe I can just use the angles. Oh, I totally. I completely stuffed that up, didn't I? Yeah, I totally forget how to do maths. Forgot how to do maths. Completely of any triangle. How do I find the length of a side of a triangle? Well, I know that. 
which is why I'm trying to find a right angle triangle. I'm just talking about any triangle. Oh, here we go. D. Some. That's just great. So. Maybe it doesn't really matter, because I was doing pretty well up here. If I if I simply just <laughs> if I simply just uh, get the distance. If if I if I just try to figure out what s is from d, I think that's much easier. Is to find S from D. Oh boy. Okay. Get a cool P. Culp, I'll call you. Oh, well, I'm making a game. That's what I'm making. So. <laughs> This is not the game. Uh, I'm trying to make this game over here. I'm trying to make a car drive. So let's see. If I move the player over here, I press play. This is gonna go really well. Oh, hey, Carlos Flores. Oh, this is awesome. Yeah, community. So here's my car. It currently goes backwards when I press forwards. Uh, and forwards when I press backwards. So these are all good things. At least the steering works in the right direction. Oh yeah, and it just goes nuts when you, when you run into things. Anyway, basically what I'm trying to do is make this car work. And it seems like it's a long way from that. Cars are kind of complicated because there's two points of friction. There's one at the front and there's one at the back, and they all and they both work differently to each other, because like the wheels can only move along one axis, and then the front wheels turn so that the axis changes. So it makes it really complicated to do the physics. Oh, thank you. Oh yeah, the lighting. The lighting system was really complicated. Uh, <laughs> the lighting is custom built and it can do all sorts of stuff. For example, you can see this partial shadow behind the player's head. You see how when I move the player, this, this line behind the player moves too? And it's a partial shadow, because most games you would see a full shadow, right? It would be perfectly dark behind the player's head, but actually it's casting a transparent shadow, so it can do layers of transparency. Anyway, that was a long time ago that I implemented that. But, so the question is, uh, what's the game about? Why not make it all wheel drive? Okay, I have no idea what that means. What do you mean? Uh, the game is about James. You're looking at him. And his wife goes missing. And, well, a 
lot of antics ensue. I'm not going to tell you the rest of the story. <laughs> not going to tell you the rest of the story. Because, one, it's a work in progress, and two, it's a secret. But for now, but part of the story has him driving this car. And I have to make it work. So I was trying to just figure out how to make the front wheels, make, make it drive like it should. And this right here was a little experiment where I made the front wheel, where I made a front wheel and a back wheel, and I stuck them together with a distance joint. And then I added some horizontal friction. I think, I think it's not a total lost cause. Like it's 90 degrees offset. I was making this just before, so the context is a bit lost, I suppose. There you go. So that's the back wheel, and it always points towards the front wheel. I can turn the front wheel, and I can drive the back wheel. If... Wow, that actually works. <laughs> that actually works. No kidding. There you go, look at that. And I can like turn the front wheel. And I can drive the car forwards. Whoops, I'm steering the opposite of what I expect. Yeah, that kind of works. Cool. <laughs> can we steal the code? <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> you can steal the code if you want. It's probably not worth stealing though. Stealing garbage is what you'll be stealing. But I'm not really sure how I'm going to integrate this with my main game. <laughs> yeah, well... It's kind of hard to pick an engine at the start, honestly. It's very difficult. And, like, I really tried to use Godot. I really tried, but it just didn't let me do everything that I needed to do. For example, the lighting system, which required a lot of modifications to the engine, right? So, like, there is so much custom stuff in my game engine. It's just crazy. Look at this, now the steering actually works the right direction. Oh, that's awesome. I'm really happy with that. Look at that. And the wheel even tends towards the center, which is kind of like what you would expect in a car, I suppose. Because all I'm doing is adding a torque to the wheel. Is that how real cars work? <laughs> I think it might be. They just prefer to point in the right direction because of friction. That's funny. Wow, you learn something new every day. What IDE am I using? Okay, I am using Visual Studio Code and it has the uh, C-sharp and debugger for Unity plugins enabled which pretty much work together pretty well I like it a lot big brain science stuff yeah no kidding where'd my car go there it is look at that strolling along The problem with this kind of thing is that once I make it, I can just play with it for hours, you know? How good is that? <laughs> wow. Okay, well, here's the code if you want to steal it. Pretty much simple. <laughs> <laughs>
Bye, Carlos. All right, so now I have to somehow port this to my main game. I'm not really sure how this is going to work, but I can try. I can try. Oh, new sub. Yes, yeah, sweet. <laughs> Thank you. Alright. Jeez, I haven't really got much time until I have to eat lunch. So, let's see if what I can do before I get too hungry. <sighs> Maybe I can fake it. Because the problem is that this has to react. These wheels have to react to... What? Wow, no wonder I overrode Unity's controls. Awful. Okay, so this has to react somehow to the main rigid body, which will be like a box, for example, right? So I need to... Like... If I make a bunch of stuff... Oh, how do you resize stuff in Unity? There you go. So there's some objects for me to run into. And so this car needs to somehow have a rigid body on it, right? So I need a box collider, probably. Box collider... The problem is that I'm dealing with multiple rigid bodies. So I have no idea how I'm going to make that work. <laughs> cool. Is that wheel looking kind of obese? Yeah. Yeah, a little. A little. I'll go and fix it. I noticed that earlier. Let's see. Let's see. Ah, oh, no, that's off track. Off track. No. No. I'm going to work on my car. I'm going to work on the car physics. Car physics. You use a composite, but like, they're, they're totally different rigid bodies, right? And if I use a composite, then it'll like weld them all together. I need to use like joints. <laughs> I need to use joints somehow, I think. Or maybe I don't even need rigid bodies at all. And I'm totally confusing myself. No, I think joints should work. So if I like. If I just attach with a hinge joint, I think, a hinge joint, if I just attach the front wheel straight to the car, right? And then I attach the back wheel straight to the car as well with a hinge joint. Then maybe, just maybe, they will sort of just work. Let me see if that's true. I highly doubt it. Oh, I help if you know what joints were. Well, you know, they join things together kind of like in the human body, you know? Oh, cool. It actually works. Okay, let's see. Is the box going to run into the tire? Wow, it actually worked. Oh my goodness. That seems... Wow. I need to add like a much higher force to this car. Don't you think? 
Let's multiply it by like 10 at least. Yeah, yeah, I reckon. I think I'm on to something here. Okay, reverse the car, steer the car. Whoa, <laughs> too fast. Okay. Crash. Oh, yes. Yes, okay. Awesome. Wow, that works so well. Okay, that... <laughs> <laughs> yes, okay, all right. Wow, that makes me happy. Okay, it's good to see results, hey. So, now I need to integrate that same exact logic into this car. <laughs> all right, so I'll just do exactly what I was doing. Let's do exactly what I was doing. So I'll add, I'll add, I'll just make it like a motorbike, right? And then any visualization of wheels will just be a lie. So front wheel, oh, I've already got, yeah, I'll just call it front wheel body. <laughs> yeah, I reckon. I, no, the problem with control C, control V is that my logic was terrible before. So I want to kind of improve upon that. <laughs> okay, so you got a box collider. Make it smaller. I think the actual collider doesn't matter like at all. So I'm just going to remove it. I'm just going to add rigid body with a nice arrow on it so I can see what direction it points. Okay. And then I'll move it forwards. Move my front wheels and then I will... Yeah, it doesn't need a collider. I think a rigid body can work without a collider. It's just like a point in space with some friction on, on it or something. And so I'll just add a I'm doing something really stupid, but but it doesn't matter because I already proved that it works. I already proved that it works, so it doesn't matter. Add a hinge joint to this. And then I will, in fact, control C, control V, that guy. Uh, back wheel body. Ah, oh, see ya. See ya, cool P. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for the support. It helps a lot. All right. I think I might, yeah, it's basically the same exact thing. And so the front wheels, I wonder if I can just chuck that in there. There you go. And then it can be lined up properly. There you go. There you go. All right. It's nice having people watching your stuff and commenting. Makes it more exciting. Wow, I cannot believe how well that works.
You know what? I'm gonna tweet that. I'm gonna tweet this guy. So I get my peak program. I put it here. I can't believe how well that works. I just cannot believe it. Oh, I need to be able to steer faster. <laughs> it's cool because it makes this it makes the turning circle bigger when you go faster and stuff uh, and, and then you can do like really sharp turns when you're going slowly it's like perfect <laughs> It is perfect, seriously. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna tweet. Back. I tweeted about my car physics. I think that would actually be a good cause for a tutorial, honestly. 
if I made a tutorial from that little bit of like it's so simple it's just a, it's just three rigid bodies and a tiny bit of logic to add some friction in the horizontal direction on the wheels and that's literally it <laughs> it's amazing it's amazing how well that works yeah, and and some joints, and some joints. So like, if I made a tutorial video about that, I could make a you know nicely edited. I'll consider doing that tomorrow or soon, soon, soon. Anyway, let's see how I go. Uh, integrating this into my real game. All right, so I have I have no cause for a hinge joint on the back wheel. It doesn't really make sense to use a hinge joint. Yeah, I think I think what I really need is like a fixed joint or something like that. Go back to my live stream thing just in case someone's watching. Yeah, streaming kind of makes it more exciting. How long have I been going so far? Oh, one hour 52. That means I've got eight minutes to integrate it into my game. I think I actually might be able to do it in two hours, which is surprising. Eight minutes. Hmm. I might be. Uh, I might be a bit too enthusiastic there, but let's see how I go. Uh, joint two D. So what I need is like a fixed joint, not a fixed joint. Yeah, maybe, maybe a fixed joint. Relative joint? Is that what I want? Maybe it's relative joint. So my relative joint. If I just straight up remove these box colliders. Wait. Was that? Yeah, yeah. It's just okay. If I just remove the box colliders from my from my bodies. How does it look then? Does the game still work? No. Very much. That's 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 very much a no. <laughs> Wait, let me just try it with that hinge joint again just in case. Just in case. So the hinge joint, maybe that was the actual cause of the problem. There you go. Look at that. It goes off the screen really fast, but basically it proves that I don't really need that hinge joint and I don't need to set the rotation because I can use a real joint to make the rotation correct. A joint that just comes with rotation, that would be ideal. So I feel like relative joint should be able to do this, but I'm not quite sure, so let's find out. Ah, oh, I didn't connect it. I didn't connect it. Ah, oh, that's bad. Okay. I need to connect the joint to the main car. Wow. 
Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I don't know, I'm pretty impressed with myself, as you might be able to tell. <laughs> Bam! That's just incredible. Okay, so it's even fewer lines of code than I thought. That is so simple. Okay, so let's uh, integrate it into the into the main game. <laughs> let's do it real fast. Okay, I've got four minutes now. Maybe I can give myself a little bit of leeway because of all the talking and stuff that I've done and all the introduction that I gave. Anyway, let's see how I go. So I need to just remove the hinge joint from the back wheel and just use a relative joint and then use the player car as the actual body. And so I've got that and then the front wheel body is hinge jointed onto the car which is good and then I need to oh and I can even use the hinge joint to stop the wheels from turning too far right so I can say use limits and then I can add some angle limits yeah this is a great idea maybe <laughs> 90 so in theory Okay, okay. So I want it to be between minus 45 and 45, basically. They're the only angles that it's allowed to turn. And then I just need to go into the car's controller, wherever that is. I guess it's the car hijacker. It needs to know about those two bodies. So I'm going to have to add the front wheel and back wheel bodies to my and don't forget to assign them later because I always forget to assign them and then okay let's see so I'm going to use the actual steering direction I'm going to use the steering. Maybe I don't need steer dir because I didn't have that in my other one. I just need like steer speed. I need steer speed. Well, yeah. Steer speed. Exactly. So I've got steer speed, which will be used to. Well, I don't really need to. I need I need to use that to add some torque, I think. So I'm just going to add some torque to the front wheels and it'll be even more realistic maybe, maybe. Let's see. Let's see. Front wheel body dot add torque. And the torque is going to be relative to the steering direction, the steering speed. So it's going to be steering speed times like 90 or something. Uh, the wheel rotation is going to be directly related to the front wheel body's rotation. So let's just use that as the input rotation for the I guess that's going to be a global rotation then if I'm just using doesn't really matter let's see now I need that function apply wheel friction I've probably already got oh, I'm already over the time limit okay come on and then I need to apply my wheel friction to the front and the back wheels so I need front wheel body and back wheel body to have the have the horizontal friction applied and then I don't really need to change the velocity of that because I'm gonna just use add force on the back wheels and it will be a force that is the difference between the front and the back wheels well,
Eh, maybe just add a force like in the forwards direction. So just uh, back wheel body dot. Dot transform dot right, I think. Not entirely sure. So back wheel body, add force. So add a force to the back wheel body. And hopefully, hopefully. Takes so long to reload. Play the game. All right. Ah, uh, you know what I said to myself just like five minutes ago? Do not forget. Do not forget. And what did I do? I totally forgot to assign these fields right there. Okay, 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 okay. Almost there. Oh, it's going backwards when I press forwards. Not really what I want, but <laughs> uh, pretty close. Speed. What's that? I don't know. I don't know. Does the car have a whole bunch of friction on it? Is that the problem? Maybe the car body has a bunch of friction that I forgot to remove. Okay, it's mass is pretty heavy. Like obviously cars are a lot more than 20 kilograms, but that's what it'll be like in this one, in this game. Okay, let's see, does the car drive? Why is it so slow? Why is it so slow? Okay, clearly, clearly I need to fix something. I mean, I'd say I pro I I would say I succeeded, right? Because because the goal was to make a drivable car. It's just not integrated in the game yet, right? Why did I do the complete opposite of what I want? I feel like, I feel like this velocity here is 90 degrees offset. So let's just try that. Why, why isn't it reloading the code? Oh no. It's because I've got two projects open at the same time. Doesn't help at all. Am I applying wheel friction? I am. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to have to <laughs> Wait, is it working? I don't think so. Let's let's just play the game again. I think that torque that I'm adding is not doing anything. Hmm. 
Yeah, you can see like when I hold that down, literally nothing is happening. If I turn off those limits, literally nothing. Literally nothing. Ah, uh, it's because destiator Dest is a totally different variable. Speed. Okay, okay, okay. So destia speed. It's it's going to be pretty weird controls, just because the arrows actually rotate the steering wheel. But if you let go of the arrows while you're moving, if you let go of the steel steering wheel in a car while you're moving, the steering wheel will automatically return to the center, which is exactly what my game does. This is exactly what this logic does. So I'm interested to see how it turns out. Getting pretty hungry here, so definitely going to have to wrap this up soon. Oh my goodness. So this is me holding down an arrow key. You can see the the angle is in fact changing like really slowly. Oh no, maybe not. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's not. Oh, it's because... Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> it's because I shouldn't really separate death sp steer speed and steer speed. I should just make them one variable, right? That's what the problem was. And so, speed. See, that, that should be the same, I think. So I just want speed equals. And that's how much the throttle is being pressed in the car. Uh, I'll use desk speed cuz cuz I might bind sound effects to it and it'll change the speed change the pitch of the sound so it'll go as you change the speed and you don't want it to go when you press a button. You want it to sort of slide there. So that's why I will separate them on purpose. Because it is, in fact, the acceleration speed. Whoa, okay. It definitely works. Use limits. <laughs> wow, okay. That did not work at all. Okay, let's go back into the game and see what happens. I think I just broke it by toggling that while I was running. Uh, adding torque to the wheels is not the right approach at all. No. Adding torque to the wheels is a terrible idea. because it adds a torque to the whole car. And that's definitely not how it works. <laughs> okay, so I'm actually gonna have to go back to this approach, which is what I had originally. Front wheel rotation. Okay, front wheel body. Feels like I'm just like, it's so sad that, well, I don't know, I, I just want it to be complicated, but yeah, it keeps being, it keeps being true that the simplest, the simplest, simplest solution works the best. So, guess I'll just stick to that then. So, I want to do the opposite. Mm, 
not real sure. Ah, uh, I'm using the negative. Yeah, there we go. Okay. You see the arrow moving when I steer it? <laughs> awesome. Uh, it's very slidey. I feel like there's just not enough friction on the wheels or something. But they do return to the middle like like you would expect in real life. But there is definitely not enough friction being applied to those wheels. So I'll increase it by two times. how that goes. Look at that. That's nuts. I think I'm setting the rotation of the wheels like Incorrectly, maybe. Ah, oh, well, not necessarily. Well, like setting the rotation to subtract steer speed without including any kind of um, delta time in the equation is definitely wrong. And so let's just increase the steer speed. So that should be like 90 degrees a second that it attempts to steer by. So that's like one, two, one, two. So maybe a little bit too slow even. 180 degrees, one, two. Yeah, okay. Let's see how that goes. And there is definitely not enough friction on there is definitely not enough force being applied to the car itself so let's just increase that wow that's fast <laughs> that's real fast <laughs> Not gonna lie, definitely works. Definitely works. So, why does it? So, this is very strange. This is very strange. Like I can let go of the arrow, of the arrow key and it just keeps driving. It's like it applies it afterwards, like press release. I just don't really get it. It seems to have so much forward momentum. Why does it keep speeding up? That makes no sense to me. It when it when it when it slows down, it should. Oh, is it because this? <laughs> it's because of this speed thing. That is that transitions. It's because the speed transitions over time. 
to its destination value. Okay. Wow, you can definitely go fast, that's for sure. So maybe I should add force until the car is moving fast enough. So it's like... Add force as long as the car is moving. Yeah, so I'll just use the velocity magnitude. So current speed. Current movement speed is that, and then I'll just go like max speed is gonna be like Fifty kilometers an hour or something. Fifty kilometers an hour. Uh, if it's less than the max speed, then keep applying the force. Otherwise, just stop applying the force. Why does it want to steer the wheels? That's what I would like to know. So if the car is perfectly still... I would expect the car to have some friction, right? So I'll add some linear drag and some angular drag to the car body. Ah, oh, undo. <clears throat> to the car itself, right? So that is way too much. What if I just increase the mass again? So the car is a hundred kilograms. And I am applying a hundred units of force, I guess. It's not very clear to me what these numbers mean. Whoa, okay. So you can drive pretty fast. <laughs> I still feel like that's too fast. Max speed is 10. seems to be a lot faster than 10 kilometers an hour, right? There is not enough friction on the wheels at all. There needs to be like a lot of friction on the wheels. <laughs> It 
Still doesn't seem to be doing much. Just make it a lot. Make it like 10 times as much. Because I increased the mass, obviously, but... Oh, is it because of the angular drag that's so high? That's probably what it is. It's just because it's got a really high angular drag. What if I just have no angular drag? How about that? Oh, okay, obviously I need some kind of angular drag. See, they seem to kick in much too late. So when I had zero angular drag... that wow okay I think I'm doing something bad ah uh, so so like when I go outside of the range of the hinge joint, I think the hinge joint is actually applying a angular moment. Well, at least it's applying some torque to the actual car. So if I turn off the limits and just allow it to... If I point the wheels sideways, <laughs> the car should have a lot of trouble driving, but it doesn't. It doesn't have a lot of trouble driving, so what if I just go nuts with the drag value? I feel like my logic, as usual, is 90 degrees offset. <sighs> Get a other viewer. That's probably why my drag isn't working very well. Uh, but then again... But then again, you'd think, you'd think that it should still, think that it should work. All right, I'm getting pretty hungry here, but um, I think I should finish the job. I think I should finish the job. So the rotation is going to be, I'm going to limit it to, the car's rotation basically. So I want the car's body rotation. Front wheel body, rigid body. So I want the body of the car. I want to get its rotation and limit it Limit the front wheel rotation to be between body rotation minus forty five and plus forty five. Hopefully, you won't be able to steer like a ridiculous amount. And 
and then so I still need my hinge joint I just don't need any limits anymore because well because so how are we going here see 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 they're offset from the car's body. That's terrible. <laughs> okay, so I'll just add 90 to the body rotation and see what happens. No, that should... Yeah, add 90, right? Maybe. <laughs> we'll see. Ah, oh, three viewers at the same time. Oh, look at that. The wheels now point in the right direction. Whoa, okay. The mass of the car is probably like 20 kilograms again. <laughs> Doing some sweet burnouts. It's not very good. Okay, so if I just increase the drag on both accounts to something really high. Okay, maybe maybe that's a little bit too much. One and one. Okay, angular drag seems to be too high, uh, too low. Bam. Bam. See, they're not really applying enough force. Okay, maybe just setting the mass to 100 is just a bad idea. Okay, 500 is not better. Wow, okay. And then all and then I can just decrease the force by like a lot to something like 200. Feel free to comment in the chat. By the way. Okay. That seems like a better balance. If I crash into this wall here. Go back into the car park. Like, the front wheels don't seem to have the influence that you'd hope they would have. I feel like 45 degrees is not enough, by the way. So, max steering is like 70 degrees instead. So if I subtract 70 and add 70, then I'll be able to steer more. And then, the amount of friction is currently 10,000. Like, I might as well just straight up set it to zero at that point, I feel like. What if I do that? That would prove a lot, probably. So if I just don't use drag and instead just stop them from having a horizontal velocity, Okay, maybe that's a little bit too much steering, as if a real car can steer like that. It's not bad. It might have been better when it was 20 kilograms though. Uncontrollable, this thing. 
I don't like how the, the wheels can just sort of turn by themselves. So that's a hundred percent friction on the on the y axis, which is confusing because the car points sideways um, in local space. So I'm going to decrease that to sixty degrees, maybe even fifty-five. It's just ten degrees more than forty-five. Yeah. Okay. Well. It's not bad. It's not bad. If I just let it be linear drag 1, angular drag 2, mass 20. One, two. Yeah, and so all I really need to do is increase the influence of that, uh, increase the, tr well, decrease the transition time of that camera, and then just increase the priority so that it doesn't like lag so much. All right. Look at that. That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. Thank you, physics engine. Yeah, cool. All right. So I'd say that's looking pretty good. <laughs> Run into the key. Okay. I did it. I made the car work. I think I can go have lunch in a minute. Well, okay. Cool. <sighs> All right. So I think that is a wrap. Goodness me. Wow. It's kind of fun to have the camera pointing at me because it, uh, I don't know, makes me pay attention. <laughs> makes me pay attention to what I'm actually trying to achieve. And I don't get sidetracked and you know, go on Hacker News or something. Or just like try and do something random. Like if I set myself a goal and then I tell, and then I say, well, this is a live stream where I'm going to do that thing. Then like, obviously I'm going to want to do the thing rather than being like, oh, I want to change the picture of the tire or yeah, something like that. Anyway, so, well, now you've seen it. You saw it here. 
The car works and it uses the physics engine. Now I'm gonna go have lunch. Thank you very much.